Have you ever listened to psychic mediums and everything turns out to be light and bright and all is well? Have you then realized that there's more to reveal that maybe something is missing? Welcome to Shades of Spirit Radio with me, psychic medium Jamie. Join me as I connect you to all shades of spirit during this live call-in show. I'm a medium, Reiki master, spiritual connector, and paranormal investigator. I provide a safe space for people to turn when they are scared and in a non-judgmental heart. I'm going to help you, the listeners, identify ways you can connect by supplying the spiritual tools you can use in your everyday life when connecting with spirit. We reach everyone and exclude no one. Are you ready to connect with spirit? This show is leaving nothing off limits. Shades of Spirit starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shades of Spirit. I am psychic medium Jamie, also a Reiki master, providing you a fun-filled show today. Welcome to my new time slot. Um, I had a lot of family obligations going on trying to get this together to be on a Tuesday morning. And so now things are starting to slow down. Though I'm not going to lie, a little emotional week because my middle daughter is heading off to college on Friday. So it's been quite the roller coaster ride when you're getting them ready to go and you're excited for them to go. And then all of a sudden it's time for them to go and you're like, you can't leave. And so that's been a lot of what's been happening is she puts all her stuff out on the tables and organizes it. But that's the course of life, right? And so we just have to ride those waves and know that as parents, we've done a great job. And, I, you know, my connection with spirit, being able to show me kind of, you know, the direction that they go in a little bit. Now they all take their own lives. And yes, I can kind of tune into my own kids, just like if I do a reading for someone and kind of see where they're kind of headed. And it's just a beautiful process, which I love. But today we're talking about something that LaShawn and I have near and dear to our heart, and that is the paranormal. So LaShawn, the luminous mystic, is joining me today because we decided in one week, let's do two completely different locations and let's investigate both of them, which were LaShawn has got like the most comfy outfit on right now. I'm just loving this outfit. <laughs> you just were like, hmm, screw it. We're putting on the sweatshirt. Ah, that's really the week that we have had here. And uh, the sunglasses or the glasses that match. Now, I've not seen this pair. I'm really liking this pair. No, is this new? Yes, this new. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So we've had a week, have we not? Yeah, quite the week. Um, you know, it's amazing when we do have these type of weeks. It's interesting. It's never a dull moment. Um, but I would say this week was kind of taxing when it comes to the paranormal compared to what we have had in the past. Um, and to do some, a couple of them within the same week is it's something. It's a lot. <laughs> but would we do it again? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> which is where we're going. So for you guys that don't know yet, I don't know how you can't, but it's okay because, well, we're just going to keep talking about it. LaShawn and I have obviously our own businesses. So we are women owned businesses. LaShawn has luminous, mis luminous mystic, luminous path with love. She is a luminous mystic and yeah. I have shaped spirit LLC. And what we've done is we've created a baby. LaShawn and I have had a baby. It's beautiful. <laughs> and we've created paranormal road trip. And you guys can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. I'm going to be working this week diligently on getting YouTube up because I feel like that's a good next step. Eventually, the website will unfold, but ultimately, you guys don't need a website in order to get a hold of us because we've got all of our contact information on Instagram and we have TikTok. So, you know, we'll try and post some things on there as well. But as of now, we've been doing this together for years. It was time to create a baby and make it something that has a name and a purpose now, which I love because when we give it a name, we give it a purpose, it goes into its own Akashic Records, which is fascinating how businesses, homes, all that stuff ties into the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. But now we've made a record for our baby. Oh, I feel like we're like doing some sort of compilation album. Perfect. <laughs> The first one is paranormal. Um, and with that being said, that now is to take us into a completely different space. 
because not all of my Shades of Spirit viewers and followers and clients, as I'm sure you can agree, are into the paranormal. Right. And yeah. so by creating kind of a separate entity, you guys are still going to see paranormal stuff on Shades of Spirit and on Luminous Path with Love because that's part of who we are and what we do. And we get a lot of our clients from you all. But at the same time, we're moving into a different um, area as well to be able to uh, be a source for those people that really are in the paranormal, that are really having hard times and searching for paranormal groups uh, to be able to come help and to investigate their homes, which is what happened this week. So I had a client reach out. LaShawn and I had been there before. She was doing some construction on her property, um, was having some activity. Actually, wasn't even having a lot of activity. She was referred to me by a friend of ours who had given her reading. And that friend had felt like there was some type of activity on the property and gave her our information. So we went out and we, you know, got our information from spirit and kind of connected some things that she was able to validate about the land and what had happened on the surrounding land. Um, so that was really validating for us. We were able to kind of do our thing where we work on kind of clearing out some of that energy and raising the vibration and then told her to call us back when she finished kind of the construction. Cause if you guys don't know when you disrupt the land, the majority of the time, not all, the majority of the time, you're going to have a, an increase in activity in your home and on the land, right? Mm -hmm. So you look at a lot of those areas out, Marietta, Temecula, those outskirts, Menifee, where they're constantly building. And how many times have we gotten calls and been out in those areas because of the amount of construction going on? So she called us a few months later. She goes, I know it's a little bit longer than it should have been with actual activity in her space. And so we were like, okay, let's go. Cause that's what we like to do. Right. So LaShawn got all of her equipment and she'll talk about things that she found on it, what the equipment piece is, how does it work here in a second. And we were actually able to validate the main area in the home, which was the main area that she was having issues with by evidence from the equipment, as well as the timing of things that we were feeling and then the things that were happening with the equipment that we were holding that we had on the dresser and that LaShawn had. So for us, it is very scientific as well as spiritual. And I think it's important when we're doing this type of work that we come at it in a scientific way, using the tools that have been created in order to gauge energy and then to be able to be in that space of intuitive psychics, mediums, I mean, you just throw it all into one bunch for us and to be able to feel what the client is feeling in the same area gives them validation and then to have it pull up on the equipment just solidifies that that's the spot that we need to work on. And then be able to get to some of what we did is we asked a lot of questions to our client. This isn't something that we have to be secret about or we don't want them to tell us information and really got to the source of some of her own physical pain in her body as to when it started the activity to being associated with someone that she met. I mean, it just, I have the chills, blew my mind at how all of that came together. So when you go, when you go, when we go to a location, LaShawn, what are the goodies in your goodie bag first? Let's let everybody know that, yeah, we are the real deal. We have the equipment that you're going to see on all of those ghost shows on TV, right? The ones that have been around 20 plus years, the stuff that you have purchased that we are using for our investigations is legit stuff. Like it's, you will see it on TV. That's how much we care about making sure we bring the correct evidence to you guys. So what, what it, you always got your little wheelie case, right? If it's not holding crystals and stuff to fix crystals with, then it's got paranormal stuff in it. So explain some of the pieces of equipment that we brought to the house on Monday. Okay, so the first thing that we bought, um, brought was the SLS camera, which is the camera that um, shows the stick figures, if you will, the simplest way I could put it for everybody to understand. So um, without going into like the technical stuff of it, it just, what it does is it shows when spirit is in the room with us. Now, when I say this, I really say this somewhat loosely just because Spirit can still be in a room, but not show itself on any of our equipments or cause any of it to go off. But when we do get it, 
Um, and when they do show themselves on there, it's nothing short of amazing. Um, and in that case, with that was, I guess we'll get to that. But we also had um, the ovulus, which is this little, this is my new toy, which um, when they first made them, um, they only made, I think it was like a thousand of them. And this was years and years ago. I have been waiting for one of these for a very long time. I got my hands on one. And this one does a lot because um, there's words that come up. So there's a dictionary that is in um, within the device that allows the spirit to manipulate it and choose the words that is relevant to them, to what we're doing or, or whatnot. What I love about this one is it does not, not throw just throw words out there so if spirit is not picking those words saying those words then it doesn't come up okay um then of course we have the k2 meters which um this one is now my favorite compared to the older ones okay and what i love about this one is um it has the temperature at the bottom which is great because i just checked it for against my house and what my house says it is and versus this and it's exactly the same thing um but it also lights up when it's very high em um um, electromagnetic like fields being um, registered. There's a number where you can see how many um, MGs it is. Um, this is a really good one. So um, even if, because we heard it all night at, at the Palomar, not even being in the same room, at least we can hear it and know that something is happening, right? Um, and then of course we have the cat balls, which I don't have any here right now. Um, we have the cat balls, which is now my, also one of my very favorites. Um, and it's simple. And that one is so inexpensive to get if you just want to have something in your home. Um, we also have the tracer. The tracer is where um, there's a device that is put on the floor that can track footsteps of spirit. Um, it lights up. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else do we have? We have the rim pods. Um, that measures temperature, that measures um, when spirit gets into the make the um, the um, boundaries of that field. Um, we also, what else do we have? Oh my God, we just got everything. And um, all the things. We had dowsing rods. Dowsing rods, pendulums. Yep. And then um, what else? Oh, our EVP. So recorded to be able to record EVPs. I have, a, we have watches that we can also record EVPs on. Yeah, we have quite a bit of stuff. It's a problem, the GS2, which measures um, temperature, which shows the shape of spirit. Um, there's a laser grid on that. Yeah, we got a lot. <laughs> it's a problem, folks, because it's addicting. <laughs> Buying the equipment it's is addicting. So with that being said, all of this equipment we have out, right? We don't necessarily use every piece of it. It depends, are we somewhere during the day? Are we somewhere during the night? Some things work better with light. Some things work better when the dark. Now, when we got to our client's house, what was, you and I had the exact same experience just driving up to her home, right? So we entered mm -hmm. in to her community and you got there a few minutes before I did. So you thought, well, I'll just drive and kind of get a vibe of the land around the home. This is important, you guys. So when we're doing this work, it isn't just to show up at a house. Hi, how are you? Oh, you got some activity. Oh, I got a chill here. Look, my little meter went off and sorry, thanks. You do have some activity. That's BS. We don't do that. We want to feel what it's like in the area because sometimes what's happening somewhere in the area and if our energy is a match for that energy or that situation that's caused this energy, it will be drawn to us. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that that energy is just haunting our home, haunting being used loosely, folks. It means that it could have been like, oh, this person might be able to see me or feel me or, oh, I can totally use this person's energy because they're in this particular vibration. Right. We're not all going to be floating and singing songs, eating candy canes and floating on dinosaurs and, you know, unicorns. Okay. Or is not, we're going to have those times where in this case, grief had caused such a hole, if you will, in the center of this room that energies were able to come through more freely into her space and therefore causing disruptions in her own energy, her physical body, the space, 
So when we drove the property, we both felt heavy, heavy, like just coming into the neighborhood. But then you went and expanded past the home. And what did you feel on the land then? So the closer, the further that I went away from the home, the lighter it felt. Um, and so it, there was still a heaviness, but it wasn't as heavy as like that central area and come and leading up to the area. Um, now I come, you know, um, from the Marietta area going further south. And um, the interesting thing is the way that the GPS took me this this time around it was, it's everything leading up into that spot as well, um, that where I can start picking up things and sensing things. But yeah, that area is, very, I, I felt very heavy. The further that I got away from it, the lighter it was. As I was coming back down to the property, that heaviness ha was, was there again. So that that's a clear indication that that area that and not even just her home, but the land of that area is something that we needed to kind of look into um, and, and explore a little more. Which was fascinating because we knew a little bit of history from being there before. before and yep. so what we found out within that area that is kind of it's bigger properties, if you will. We're more in a rural area, okay? Right. And so their their neighborhoods obviously are a little more expansive, but we knew that there was a fire in that area. Right. We, we felt the first time out that there was a little girl there and another mm -hmm. female there. And yeah. then it came that they were the ones talking about the fire, which they actually had passed in a fire in that area. Mm -hmm. And the heaviness that set in this area became even more because the house that was nearby when it was for sale two more people passed right. in that process of, of closing escrow. And so what was ironic is it was about the same location as the fire that took the life of the woman and the, the little girl. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of heavy energy. The weather plays a part in the energy vibration as well. So it's been tropical, humid, it was overcast and yet hot. And that just, it doesn't allow energy to escape. So literally that's why energy fascinates me. If you think about when you have way too many clothes on and you're trying to, you're sweaty and it's just, there's nowhere for this energy to escape, right? It sticks mm -hmm. in those clothes. You're in a sauna. Think of that heavy, that's exactly how it felt like a wet sauna, just heavy energy. But when you get out, you can finally breathe right. and there's mm -hmm. fresh air. So all of this energy is kind of being held by our environment and by the atmosphere so it's this pressure that just and honestly the higher you go up on that hill the lighter you felt coming up and out of that space right so we were able to validate just the fact of this kind of oppressive energy driving up closer to her house it wasn't coming from her house it house. was from the area right and where her energy has been that energy definitely can seep across the street and be like hi I'm coming over as well. So she had called me because she had had something wild happen in her bathroom. And she had sent me a picture and I was like, what the heck? So then I didn't, I don't tell LaShawn anything. So if I know the information, I don't tell her anything. I have her going blind and vice versa. So when we talk about the Palomar hotel that we were just at this week as well, LaShawn was the one with the information and I went in blind. So I love how we do that in tandem so that we can have those experiences and be able to validate it through the information that one of us has. So our client got the picture out and we both looked at the picture again and it was, you can't explain it. There was, there's no electricity issues. You just cannot explain what happened. She ended up having to have her walls painted because of what happened in her bathroom. And yeah. so- we knew that that was going to be a central hub, but we just didn't know how active that area was until we put out the REM pod, which then immediately went off. Mm -hmm. The cat balls on the floor started to go off. Mm -hmm. You had the SLS set up, but what was one of the most remarkable things about this? Your little friend and you seem to have a little relationship, your four-legged friend. Who was telling us what was happening firsthand? It was the dog. 
It was the dog. And the moment that I pulled into that driveway, that dog stayed attached to me for some reason. And then when I think about it, once things calmed down, because there was a point when it got really quiet, uh, meaning no equipment were going off. It was, the, it, it felt a little lighter. Um, they calmed down, you know, which we brought, I brought that up to her. It's like, did you notice? that these dogs are acting completely different now. But yeah, one of the things that had happened that just kind of really blows my mind is we're standing in the middle of the room and we're talking. I'm experiencing some pretty dreadful pain uh, dealing with the heart uh, situation of which I, I did bring up. But the dog went from standing next to me, he got on the bed, he looks up and he's sitting on his legs and he sit up and he's looking up. I'm talking to spirit in my, you know, my head. And um, I turn around and I look at him. He barks and the K2 goes off at all at the same time. It was, it was, yeah. It was pretty That's insane. That's what we're talking about, people. That is, it's, there are no coincidences. And this dog is more of her protector. Protector, Yes. Yep. And the other one is more of just glued to you. I always need to be around you. Right. So dogs play roles. We, you know, cats play roles. It, they, they are a telltale sign. When we got there, that dog went directly for LaShawn as she got out of the car. Like, come on and help. Come on. There's something you got to right. see. And so you have to also pay attention to the non-human beings, the ones that are running around on four legs that have been like, hey, I've been trying to get this stuff under control, but I just can't. Now, what we did have, too, is I was standing in the same place that you were at that point. You had the mm -hmm. SLS camera. Yep. You were catching orbs, correct, around yes. the same space. All of a sudden, I can feel like the air conditioning turned on, but it was like somebody had the air conditioning vent to my back. That's yeah. And that's spirit for me. That's And yes, she had air conditioning that was coming and going, but we weren't standing under any vents. And mm -hmm. it was like it went through you. And I'm talking about that. And all of a sudden you're feeling the same thing. Yeah. And we were connecting with an energy that belongs to someone that she knows. Yes. And we were getting all this information. You were catching things on your equipment. The K2 meter wasn't going off, but it was going up. Off. Yeah. And I think the REM pods temperature also Sorry, was gone. As well. Yeah. All in that core, literally, we've got, I don't know what it is, triangles. That was more of a triangle type experience again. It really was. And the thing about the triangle aspect of it is I could see literally a triangle on the SLS camera that um, showed from where the fireplace was to kind of, you have to be there to really understand the mapping of it. But I, I talked about that because mm -hmm. I... I, when I see things, because what I love about this SLS camera too, is it catches things that we cannot see to our visible eyes. So if there's an orb that come through, then it was, it would see that even though we can't see it, or if something is starting to manifest, it can register that. And we can see that on the, on the screen and not always at the same time that we're looking at it. Sometimes I have to go through and watch the recordings to see what happens. But yes, there was that triangle of activity. And what's even more interesting about that, um, her husband who had passed was a part, was, it's almost, um, I don't know how you would describe, it's not like a shrine or anything, but she had items of his that was there um, in uh, on the dresser, like, you know, what he did for a living, cards, all these different things that was related to him, um, of which we picked up a lot of time of spirit that was right there on that dresser, right where she had those items at. Like, I'm getting the chills right now because Just of this. That space right there, yeah. It was that space. And then what we felt, because we're always debunking. And, you know, my question to her is, are you sure it's not the air conditioner? You know, do you feel that I walk around? But it was clearly not because this was a rush. If, you, if you're ever outside and you get that one swoop of wind that comes by you, that's exactly what it was. It was there and then it left. It never came back 
um, throughout the entire day of us being there. And we were there for hours. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. We also went through the house with the equipment yep. separately and just to see what we would feel. And there really wasn't a lot in any of the other rooms. The rooms that were a little bit more of a hot spot the first time we were there, that energy absolutely calmed and centered. Now, what we learned in this is that grief is a powerful tool for opening ourselves up to energies coming in. And it doesn't happen to everybody. So I want you guys to know that first and foremost. But what right. we found in this particular experience is, is that this grief that has lasted about a year this month, right? The first right. year of grief is very heavy. Yeah. And where we felt the energy and where she was having activity were all areas that she was processing in, in the home. Yeah. She wasn't processing anywhere else in the home. Right. And so therefore we were able to really pinpoint that that was the only area that was consumed with so much grief and anger and all the things you go through in that state. And, and we have evidence of that. We, and we have do. evidence of that. Yeah, because um, as we did the walkthrough throughout the house and at, going back and reviewing the, um, the footage, there was no activity in those other places. No activity. And we had activity after activity after activity in that in, in that specific room so, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back and explain some of the things that we do to empower you and your space that we can do to help elevate the energy raise the vibration things that we bring with us that we offer for your home and your land and then we're going to talk about our last trip well my first trip to the paranormal experience of the Palomar Hotel. So I want you guys to follow us on paranormal dash paranormal road trip. Okay. Paranormal road dash. dash. <laughs> yep. We'll figure it out. Um, that's on <laughs> Facebook. That's on Instagram. We're going to be going live on there tonight to talk about some other things that we're going to be doing up and coming. Also follow us on at luminous path with love and then go over to shade spirit LLC. Check us out. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more on our paranormal experiences and some paranormal investigations that we've done last week. Welcome back, everybody. This is Shades of Spirit. I'm psychic medium, Jamie. I have got the fabulous LaShawn, the Luminous Mystic from Luminous Path with Love with me today. We are promoting and talking about our baby, our child, if you will, Paranormal Road Trip, which is a paranormal. This is all strictly paranormal investigation. So it's not going to be readings. We're not going to have, you know, we might pull some fun like cards for like Halloween or just like I've got Halloween decks and some like dark mirror decks and stuff. So we still have our gifts as a paranormal team. Um, but our primary focus is going out and investigating and empowering people through education about the paranormal. Um, it was funny because Emily, we were talking real quick before we started the show. And I mentioned, you know, about my tapestries and I'm like, Oh, this is my favorite time of year, fall, Halloween. I'll get the Ouija board one out for October. And so like, oh, I watched that movie Ouija board and that would just, freaked her out right and i'm like oh we're gonna do another show on all the different tools and physical mediumship so we'll probably do that after rightwood um and i'll tell you about that in just a second you guys but all these different things that are made to scare us from tv and movies which rightfully so you know they you want that rise how else are they going to make money but at the same time we're here then to put the empowerment back into the owner's space. Now, this doesn't mean that when we go to locations that have activity, that when we're about to leave, we're waving around the sage, singing out prayers, and trying to get the energies to move on. There's two differences in this. When someone calls because they have activity in their home and they're looking for some guidance and some help, then we're coming in to make sure that it's a safe place. We're bringing all of our paranormal equipment. We're using our gifts as intuitive psychics, mediums. We're putting all of this together. We're both Reiki masters. So feeling the energy of the space. LaShawn went through that shamanic course. And so she's got that with her as well. So when she's out working with the land, 
and I'm working on the land on the Reiki part. Like we're bringing everything that we know into the paranormal investigating, but not everybody is about the paranormal. That's why we created Paranormal Road Trip. Now, we were just talking in the first half about a client's home that we did last week. And we wanted to wrap that part up with not just, oh, we found all sorts of activity and, you know, grief really kind of brought a lot of this activity into her space because it was just, it's such a heavy process, right, to go through is grief. And yet she has really been moving forward with her life over the past few months and really kind of taken things back. And now this was the next step. And then I'm going to be doing a reading and a Reiki session with her to continue this healing process. But we wanted to do the home first to make sure that we could get anything that was there that really shouldn't be there. That maybe wasn't something that she or someone that she invited in herself and clear that out. So once we decided and knew and was validated by the owner as well and to validate her where the most of the energy was we decided it was time to now go through and actually do a cleanse of the space, right? For me, my Reiki is always on when I'm doing this. I don't even have to turn it on. I it just starts coming out, right? We're just, we're now in healing. We want to heal the home. We want to heal the land. We want to heal the energy of the client. So for me, this time around, I brought dragon's blood incense, tobacco, sage, and then copal resin on the charcoal. And so that is kind of, it depends, I'll alter it a bit, but I kind of really wanted to just clear out the energy in the land and the home. So we had walked the property and then LaShawn got a good vibe of what's going on. And she's like, I want to do the outside like perimeter all around the fence. I want to go through and cleanse that. And I said, have at it. My knees are not going to allow me to walk up and down those darn hills. So we started on the outside. She started around the fence and I started around the perimeter of where the the cement started. And then I worked my way up to the house as well, making sure all the windows and doors. Um, For me, it was using that combination outside. But you brought, last time we did bring some crystals and put them in the corners, but you felt compelled to also bring crystals again this time. And then your blue sage, which was extremely powerful. So why did you pick the crystals you did? Why did you bring the blue sage and what did you do with the crystals during that process outside? Okay, so I chose the blue sage because it is more, it's more potent, it's stronger than your white sage. The way that I view it is white sage is great if you just want the the, uh, antibacterial uh, functions of it, if you wanna clear your home where it's nothing really too heavy, it does the light work, if you will. Um, Where the blue sage, for me, it's much heavier. It goes into the more darker, heavier um, things. It is something that um, I know um, that Native Americans use. It's very powerful for them and that they use as well. And I say this from experience, just so people know, and that that come at us. Uh, My great grandfather was Native American in an actual tribe, okay? Um, So, you know, picking up these different things of what, uh, 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 how to do them. Now, the crystals that I chose was black turbaline, clear quartz and rose quartz. And what I did was um, I sprinkled it as I was saging on the outside of the uh, the perimeter of the house. And there were uh, on the four corners, what I did was I took a bigger piece and I stuck it in the ground. Okay, I the, the black turbaline was for the protection aspect. To me, the black turbaline is the highest protection that you go, go so far as crystals. I equate that with Archangel Michael on the you know darker crystal side color I'm talking about. Whereas clear quartz is a, is a protector, but I consider that to be the lighter of Archangel Michael uh, color wise of the crystals. And then the rose quartz was so that that love energy, that unconditional love on all levels is felt for spirit, for the homeowners of which she may be selling. And so anyone who comes onto that property will be able to um, feel and understand and have that loving feeling instead of, you know, anything else that we may have felt. And that is why, of which I also plan it on each side of her front door. So when you come in, that is it, it, a done deal. So, yeah, I love it. Then I went through the inside of the house with the same mixture um, and I used some other things, but 
to avoid controversy, it's my own personal choice of what I use. And so you don't get to know all of our secrets, okay? Uh, but it's, it's always a very high vibrational items that we use. But then as I go through and clear it, and this actually worked out well because we did this last time, LaShawn had her put rose water in a spray bottle and then do what to kind of seal the energy? What did you have her do? So when I do the rose water, um, and, and the first time we did, we did the rose water, I had to put her hands underneath the running water into a bowl because I wanted her energy to be um, infused with that as well. Um, rose uh, oil is the highest vibrational oil that you can get. Okay. And so um, that time we actually, she went through and she sprinkled in each of the room with her intention. I do what I do still, okay? But for me, it is very important for the homeowner to feel empowered because they are there. This is their space and they need to take complete ownership and be empowered to know that they have that control, have control over you know what can happen and, and to will it in, if you will. And then at that point, we did archangel, different archangels for each room. Now, this time, what she said, she loved that process as well. Uh, we did the same thing. She knew what to do and she she took it head on. I felt like I didn't even need to follow her around to do. I just went and did what I did and I could just see her going around and spraying that bottle, putting her intentions in there because she knew what to do. She felt empowered enough to do it on her own. And I love that. No, that's, that's what we do. That's what we do, yep. And so... I can't wait to go back and feel what the energy feels like in that space and where I'm going to do the Reiki is going to be in the same room where the activity was that we had kind of cleared that energy. I had reiki that room and then put in the protection symbols throughout that room, the ceiling, the floor. Um, but I want to continue keeping that vibration high. So I'm actually going to do her session in that space because I think it's important to keep that energy vibration as high as possible because we're still going to grieve. We're going to still have those moments and those are her safe space. So now she can hold it in a love and healing um, as opposed to that darker side of grief that we go through. Right. So that's just in a gist what we do at homes and every home is freaking different, right? We've had times where we've been in and out in an hour and a half. We've had times where we're there four hours. Um, it just depends on the energy of the homeowner first and foremost, making sure they're okay and they're safe and then working into the house itself. So also when we go, it's kind of talking to the homeowner and evaluating how they're feeling, where their energy is at in order to be able to kind of identify with the energy in the space. So it's not just show up with your equipment and then blah, blah, blah. We don't make the families leave. I want the families involved. I've done this where there's families with children. So we alter our approach and the way that we have conversations and the things that we bring for the children, like right. it, because it's happened to me and my own family I have three kids. They're all gifted. They've all had energies come to them. That's, that's where it gets a little bit tricky, but it's also from the standpoint as a parent that I want my kids empowered and I'm not going to lead them down a path of fear that we're going to bring right. them into that space. So that's just one thing that we do. Then we like to go investigate places that are allegedly haunted. Ooh. So LaShawn found this place because she lives up in that area. And we decided that we were going to book the entire hotel and open it up to those that wanted to come and do a paranormal investigation with us. But this is the first time we've done one overnight with a group. I have chills. Like I still... I Chills. Like, so it was a Thursday night, right? Just a casual weekday night where we all just dropped on down to the Palomar Hotel. And we got there early. We set up equipment. Equipment was going off immediately in a room that you knew that had activity, which I did not know. I just right. knew that you were going to give me a haunted room. That's all. Um, but you never know what that means. So we had stuff from the very flipping beginning before any of the participants showed up. We had cat balls going off. We had REM pods going off. We had the K2s going off. Like it was like Christmas morning for us. As soon as we turn a piece of equipment on and set it down and walk away, the darn thing went off. That's when you know you got something good, right? 
So by the time we got there, so we're explaining this quickly, but a lot of detail because we're going to be doing another one of these. Um, and we're going to be doing these other locations as well. We all went out and got something to eat, right? Get to know each other. Everyone relaxed a little bit, got back. Everyone got comfortable. We all met in the living room little area. And I pulled a few cards. We were all just kind of talking, kind of bring the energy in in a safe space, love and light. Um, little message for everyone so that they can kind of be tuned in. And then we started. So many things happened. <laughs> So Listen, I tried to warn everybody before we got there. I really did um, about we were not going to get any sleep. And that's exactly what happened. Oh, my God, you guys. It was it was so much fun. Like I literally we went to a little candy shop in Temecula. Right. And I looked at one of the participants and I said, I feel like mom just took us as a slumber party over to the candy shop to pick some things out. Like we were all giddy and excited and ready for what was to come. And yeah. I love that you got a lot of feedback from one of um, the participants. And she explained how much she loved that we walked them through every single part of the process, that we explained things that were happening. When they had questions, we had answers and took the time to be able to explain what was happening so that they understood, not feared it, right? right. And yet there were some screams, of course. But I think which was fascinating and that we were actually able to do with everyone except you this time was the SD method. Yes. And I think that's one thing that we want to talk about real quick is the SD method, how that works, and then kind of what we were talking about last night, right, about the interpretation of what was coming through. And mm -hmm. that fun box next to you, has it said anything else to you since we started this? The only thing it said was government and grandma. The only, well, those are the only two, yeah, those only two words that came up so far. So, so I wonder yeah. what's happening in LaShawn's household. Um, so no, the SD method is something I got to try at an investigation up in Maria at an undisclosed location. And I think talk about that briefly about how well that worked when it was two of you asking questions and just me sitting there about the responses and then getting that immediate validation from the person that knows the history of the place. Yeah, um, so the SD method is where we take the spirit box um, and we plug it into noise canceling headphones. The person that's um, doing the, the method, um, they're blindfolded. So that way all their other senses are sharpened, okay? Um, and so what happens is the SD box um, goes through a sweeping of um, a radio station. So it's kind of like a white noise type of situation. And what we do is we ask questions and um, whatever the person is doing, in this case, let's say Jamie um, was um, the person that's on the box, she would just say anything that she heard. Whatever she heard, you just say it. She doesn't hear us. Um, I throw in test stuff to make sure that she can't hear us um, throughout the, the, the process. And um, yeah, and that's what happens. And it's pretty amazing because when we, when we are asking specific questions and if we get an answer that we know is related to that question, then that means that we have an intelligent spirit um, that is able to do that, which is amazing on a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level of excitement. Because if I asked you, if I ask you your name and you give me the name, give me a name directly to what I, we just asked you, that's an intelligent um, of spirit. So yeah, it was, it's pretty awesome. And yes, it is interpretation. Um, we very clear about when, you know, how to do this process because you can't be in your head. Your ego has to step out. I don't want you to, to say, oh, I think it said. No, just say what you thought you heard and then we'll take it from there type of situation. What's interesting so. is, is that we don't make you do any of these exercises. No. And LaShawn sets it up front that if you're somebody that just kind of gets tired at three in the morning and you want to go to your room, um, A, know that we're going to still be up investigating those that want to continue investigating. You're free to go to your room. You're free to go investigate parts that you feel drawn to. But I love that our group stuck together and did this as a group. Everyone who signed up to participate got to participate in the SD method, uh, yeah. which was fantastic because we all got, but we all had different experiences. One person really didn't hear much. 
Right. And then two people had some similar things. And then yeah. my experience was a bit different as well of stuff coming through, but you got to actually participate in the things that you're seeing on TV, on these shows in a right. safe space, because right. we're not going to allow anything to come in. that isn't there for our highest and best. Now we also did, I taught scrying with mirrors. So we had mm-hmm. two people that went to two separate rooms and shut the doors. And one of them actually saw energies coming in around them. And both of them could see transfiguration within their own faces. By that point, they were kind of done. Uh, I get it. When we start feeling and seeing things happen with our own physical body, um, We also did a method where someone sits in front of us and we use the light behind them to kind of see energies coming through or, and then transfiguration again in a different capacity, which was fascinating. Uh, At one point it kind of got heavy. Okay. So we're not going to lie. It wasn't like we had, again, unicorns and roses over here. The energy started to shift and it started to get a little bit heavier. And what we ended up doing is I'm like, okay, we need to take a break. And I turned on music from the twenties, from the time that this building had been in existence. And all of a sudden the energy shifted. Our energy rose because of the music. And then all of a sudden your tracker was only going off in one section to the beat of the flipping music. Like people were dancing right in that area. It was the weird, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. And it, this just goes to show that how different things happen in different situations. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's a, that's why we have all these different pieces of equipment. Because when we use the tracker at that other location, they were actually following up and down, but we had a lot of kids. So it was almost right. like they were like, Ooh, look at the lights light up here. And then it would come back where this time it was just where the music was, where we were like, they were dancing to the tempo of the music. If the music, I, it was something. But then let me tell you, LaShawn's like, now you guys know my knees aren't great. So about three, I'm in bed, just kind of hanging out. Cause I need to get off my feet. So they're out there giggling in the halls and, it just having a good time. And she's like, we're going to go outside. I'm like, oh my God. So then some of them go outside, right? Okay, cool. They come back in. Finally, LaShawn calms down because she's all about the slumber party and her onesie pajamas. Let me tell you, she goes to bed and I'm kind of now dozing a bit, just a bit. And all of a sudden the damn K2 goes off because it makes this loud noise and it lights up and it's hot. Like the energy is just on fire right there. And I'm like, I pick it up like I'm an annoyed mother that my kid woke me up for the 14th time because they want a glass of water. And I'm like, so I'm like, all right, fine. I know you're here. Thanks. I put it back down. Two seconds later. And I'm like, oh my God, LaShawn is literally screaming, running across the room, jumping over one of the doors and spooning him in bed. But then that room, the cat ball started going off. My K2 kept going off, yeah. but we got that witching hour, if you will. It was and amazing. So it, but it wasn't that you felt like it was a negative energy coming to attack you. It was that we had all quieted down. Don't make that face and scare people. Everything <laughs> had quieted down to where then we could hear the footsteps that's in the, and so it's more startling for a minute, right? But LaShawn freaks out when there's a beetle in her tool or she thinks that there's a snake, you guys. So let's just be honest. But at the same time, you react and that's okay. We're allowed to react, right? So then everyone comes out. I finally get my ass out of bed and we all like check in with one another and make sure that everybody's good. And then everybody finally calmed down and went back to bed and LaShawn went to bed with me because she's like, I'm not being by myself anymore, which again is fine, right? We're there for one another and the sun came out and she went to bed. But that is the things that we experience on our first overnight experience. So I want to go over real quick because we got two minutes left. Some of the things that we have coming up. I know, I know. We're going to do more of these. So hold more stories. So next week we have a sold out tour at the Whaley House. And then LaShawn and I are going to be staying at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Old Town. So that's going to be awesome because we're going to bring all of our equipment. We then on the 30th. Have- other guests that are staying too, which is still available if anybody else want to come down to the hotel and stay the night. 
That's true. You have to book your hotel through your room through the hotel. Yep. But there's going to be some guests they're going to investigate with us during the night um, next week. On the 30th, we're doing a paranormal experience group reading. So it's at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Old Town, San Diego. Go to Shades of Spirit LLC to get the information and details. We're also going to be hanging out at the Whaley House. And then we've got more dates on the calendar, which we're going to be bringing to you soon. So you guys go to Paranormal Road Trip, Instagram, Facebook, go check LaShawn out. You can still sign up for our Mystic Weekend in the Woods at Wrightwood. Go to Luminous Path with Love to get that information. Sign up for readings with me at Shades of Spirit LLC. You guys, we are out. We will see you in two weeks. Thank you for joining us and have an empowered day. You've been listening to Shades of Spirit with me, Jamie. Tune in next time on Transformation Talk Radio as I connect you with your crossed over loved ones, angels, and guides. For more information and to book your own private experience, go to shadesofspirit.com. That's shadesofspirit.com.